Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to do an overview of The Rings of Power Season 2 now that the dust has settled and the episodes are all behind us. We're gonna take a step back and look at the show as a whole, we're gonna address a couple of things concerning the plot, but also the blatant disregard for canon, in fact the denial of canon, as well as the hubris of the showrunners. So the Rings of Power show not only disregards lore and canon, but they actually tried to deny the existence of it altogether or brush it off. This Tolkien professor actually stated that there is no canon in Tolkien's works. See, this is why academia is dead and no one takes literature seriously anymore. I should know, I studied it. But just because Tolkien made multiple revisions of his writing or had different versions at some point in time, or heck, even left some of those versions behind, doesn't mean that the concept of canon in his works is suddenly null and void. Everyone can see this, it's pretty obvious, but some will still attempt to use his prolific writing and meticulousness as an excuse to justify their mockery of his world. As a natural consequence of this attitude, Rings of Power was full of character and lore butchering. Which seems incredible, considering that there are several books that should work as a really strong foundation for any adaptation. However, one first needs to have all the rights to the books. No one would be prideful enough to try and adapt a story that they have insufficient rights to, right? If you do, however, choose to turn characters and a story to which you lack rights to into a TV show, then no one can help you. Not even a billion dollars. The Rings of Power is a show that tried to take Tolkien's good name, thinking the name alone would ride the show to victory. Or did they ever actually think that? I find it highly implausible, to be honest. I have this conspiracy theory that sometimes people who decide to adapt a beloved IP actually hate it and it's their plan all along to make it bad on purpose in order to destroy the legacy and the memory of that original great thing that they can never hold a candle to. Either way, as a consequence of insufficient rights and hubris, Rings of Power is jam-packed with invented subplots that have little influence on the main story, if at all, or end up leading nowhere, and it's also backed with Amazon original characters that lack depth and development. Some subplots do come together, like the Numenorians and the Southlanders, Meanwhile, other subplots in this season have little reason for existence and are simply a waste of screen time. Rings of Power Season 2 had 8 episodes. 8. That's it. And it had just about as many subplots. Nori and Grandalf, Galadriel and the Elves, Sauron and Celebrimbor, Adar and the Orcs, Numenorians, Izzy and the Men of Pelargir, Durin and the Dwarves. That's 7. That's literally one subplot per episode, plus the finale where you would probably wrap each of the subplots up for this season. And we saw how terribly that turned out. There are enough characters in this universe as it is, if we just go by Tolkien's writing, but making up even more characters makes it even harder to give them clear, logical motivations and explore their storylines properly. By the way, each of these storylines could have easily been a standalone show. The dwarves in the Second Age, Sauron's deception of the elves and forging of the rings, keeping up with the Numenorians. That one could have given the Kardashians a run for their money. When it comes to wrapping up the storyline of the dwarves, for example, pretty much all we got was one pre credit scene in the last episode that left us with more questions than answers. Then let's look at Adar. He was capped around because apparently Simon Tolkien liked him. Yet, if we cut Adar out from this season of the Rings of Power along with his orcs, nothing really changes. It's almost as if he doesn't exist in the books. Yes, if we remove Adar, Eregion would probably not get attacked. But all the main characters made it out of there anyway, with the exception of Celebrimbor, who fell victim to Sauron. Sauron ended up with the Nine Rings, which he didn't need to get through Galadriel. Adar ended up with Galadriel's ring at some point, but gave it back to her anyway, so that doesn't matter. Yes, Galadriel would not get captured if we cut out Adar, but that also had no influence on the story because the orcs and elves ended up fighting anyway. And again, the relevant characters survived the battle without a scratch, so 
battle or no battle, it matters very little. Now, I don't know if some of these are tied to continuity errors or if it's just general incompetence when it comes to juggling all the characters in the show, but we can see just how little most characters matter to the showrunners. I mentioned Arondir in my last video. Stabbed twice by Adar on the battlefield in episode 7, fell to the ground. Yet, in the finale, he's fighting like nothing ever happened and his armor is magically fine. Círdan. You may have forgotten him, he was there for about two episodes and then vanished into thin air. His role amounted to taking the three elven rings out on a boat, trying to dispose of them, failing to do so, coming to Linden, wearing one of the rings and convincing fellow elves of their power. And in addition to this, Círdan had a conversation with Elrond and shaved his beard with a seashell. The wisest and oldest elf in Middle-earth, everyone. Great use of screen time. And look, I do understand that adapting something like the events in Tolkien's Second Age is a mammoth task, but I ask again, why then do you have to introduce characters that you cannot properly develop or stuff in so many new characters into an already overflowing show? Many Rings of Power characters fall into one of the two categories. Too much screen time for how useless they are and what little their story amounts to. Estrid, Theo, Grand Elf, the Desert Hobbits, the Wizard of Rune. And in the other category, we have underused characters, considering they're an actual book character and should play a bigger part or have more development. Gil-galad, Elrond, Círdan. Heck, for Gil-galad, he plays hardly any part this season. His whole shtick is standing around, looking golden and important, using his big boy voice and making weird facial expressions. And turning to Galadriel when it comes to executive decisions, of course. Because the High King has no function, other than being the poster boy for Linden, of course. I also can't help but feel that they basically told the actor, Have you seen The Hobbit? Yeah, just act like Thranduil, but with brown hair. Because I'm totally getting these vibes, the way he carries himself, especially the way he speaks. But it just looks comical in The Rings of Power. I don't know if it's because of the script or the acting, if it's both, but this is like a Timu version of Thranduil. On the other end of the spectrum, in the first category, like I said, we have Grand Elf, for example, whose existence has no impact as of yet. He hardly impacts Nori and Poppy's lives because their whole thing this season was finding the desert hobbits, which they didn't do thanks to Grand Elf, but thanks to this hobo ex machina. Everything that happens in this subplot happens by chance, not because there is any discernible causation between the events, characters, and their actions. They are hardly connected, if at all. Wander the desert, get ambushed, become separated, find Tom Bombadil, get a vision of your friends in danger, somehow find these friends again, even though you have no clue where they were, and then save them with your newfound magic powers, find a staff, remember your name, and that's it. Level 2 cleared, rank, Gandalf achieved. Level 3, go mingle with other characters in the show. Nori and Grand Elf's relationship boil down to nothing. Since they decided to part ways at the end of the season, one would expect that they went through some sort of character transformation, that they were influenced by each other in some way, or that they have learned what they had to learn from each other. But they were separated for most of the season, and their actions had no impact on one another other than Grand Elf saving Nori. Yes, it's been established that they care about each other, but that's about it. Their decision to part ways seems random and a result of nothing in particular. It feels like a waste of screen time. Speaking of which, Pelargir. I'm gonna need your attention for this because I'm gonna summarize the subplot for you. We start the storyline with Izzy, who wakes up in Shelob's cave and gets rescued by his horse. He finds a camp where Estrid is hiding. She stabs him, but it's okay because she's a woman and he hasn't seen one of those in a while. They ride off for Pelargir together, get ambushed, but get saved by Arondir. Then do arrive to Pelargir, where Theo and Izzy attempt to steal back Izzy's horse. Theo gets captured by Ents. Arondir discovers that Estrid is possibly an enemy and chains her, but neither this nor her actual intentions are ever clearly explained. The trio goes after Theo, 
Estrid threatens Izzy with his own sword, the Ents intervene, and then release Theo and Estrid's fiancé, everyone goes back to Polar Gear, and as Izzy is preparing to leave, Estrid tells him that she no longer likes her fiancé. Izzy kisses her and attempts to take her to Numenor, but Kamen is like, no. And Izzy sails back alone. If you're still with me after this summary, you're a real one. And if you are still here, you will no doubt be able to see what a mess this subplot is. It's things happening, but they're just happening because they're happening. What is the point of Estrid? She is an Amazon original character with unclear, unexplained motivations, no characterization other than the fact that she is apparently a type of gardening tool, an opportunist, or possibly both. She didn't even have an impact on Izzy's life in the proper sense of the word, apart from turning him into a muppet whenever she looked at him. She stabbed him when they first met, then it was implied that she was evil and wanted to infiltrate Pelargir or something, her plan was never properly explained, and then she threatened Isildur with his own sword, but somehow that made him even more attracted to her because... he's an idiot? Are we sure that Estrid isn't Sauron in disguise? because that would make so much more sense, and it would be one hell of a twist. So yeah, I think I'll wrap this one here, because it's getting long, but I will add a part two. We still have Galadriel, elves, dwarves, and the Sauron plotline to put through the final autopsy, so we'll do that next week. And for one of my future videos, I was thinking of revisiting House of the Dragon, because I still have some thoughts on that second season, a video on that will likely be out once I get Rings of Power out of my system. Let me know if there is something in particular that you would want me to talk about. Maybe I make something for Halloween, you know, considering I do make costumes every now and again. And uh, anyway, until then, I'll see you soon. Take care and never forget. The sea is always right! The sea is always right!